Hey everybody, Genesis Jones here with Total G Shockers and in this five part video series we'll be talking about the GPS feature and walking through how to set up each of those related functions on your GPR B1000 rangement. Let's get started. <laughs> So GPS technology allows people to do so much on their watches and many people do take advantage of it. GPS comes in handy in several different situations like hiking, running, trekking, and other outdoor activities. If nothing else, as long as the GPS watch has adequate to superb positioning capabilities, it deserves consideration. As a GPS watch needs to access the satellites in the sky, the accuracy and precision of it mostly comes down to their sensitivity. Now when you see a GPS that has a high sensitivity receiver, you can be guaranteed that it will lock onto satellites with the utmost efficiency and speed. And the reason for this is that these watches use large banks of correlators and ultra quick DSP, which is digital signal processing. So this type of sensitivity will also play a helping hand when you're in a forest or jungle, for example. It's also important to note that GPS technology will suck the life out of your battery. As great of a feature as it is, it does consume a lot of energy, making the battery life even more important. With the amount of convenience that they provide, it sure would be a disaster for the battery to die in a crucial situation. Thankfully for a G-Shock watch like the GPR B1000 Rangeman, not only is there approximately 20 to 33 hours of watch use even with the GPS function in operation, which by the way is much better compared to other GPS watches that can only last for 8 to 10 hours, but the GPR arrangement is solar assisted, making it possible to charge the watch through solar energy in order to keep the GPS function in use. So now that we have the background down and out of the way, let's get into how to start the navigation, interpreting the GPS navigation information, how to change the display scale, and how to check the distance to your destination all on your GPR arrangement. Now with GPS navigation, you can receive GPS signals and record the routes you travel. You can also specify a destination and obtain navigation information to your destination point. So to start the navigation, first enter the GPS navigation mode on your arrangement. Now to do this, step one, simply press the rotary switch in any mode on your arrangement to display the GPS navigation mode setting screen. Also, just holding down the rotary switch in any mode for no more than one second will also display the navigation screen. Now that you have entered the GPS navigation setting screen, step two, you want to rotate the rotary switch and move the pointer to navigation and press the rotary switch. This will then start route recording and navigation on the screen. So now let's jump into how to interpret the GPS navigation information. So with the following enumerated on the screen, here's what all this means on your watch. So at point one, that's the memory usage. Point two, that's the actual route you're on. Point three is the scale. Point four is the log acquisition status. Now when the log information is being acquired, the arrow is filled in. When the log information is not being acquired, the arrow is hollow. At point five, we have the navigation indicators. So the filled in dot indicates the current location. The S indicates the starting point. G indicates the destination or the goal. And the numbers from one to nine indicate the waypoints. At point six, we have the route to the destination. And at point seven, we have the elapsed time. Now the waypoints and a route can be specified using the G-Shock connected app only. Within the app, you can estimate approximately how much longer navigation functions can be used based on memory usage and elapsed time. Next, let's get into how to change the display scale. 
Now, the scale of the navigation screen can be increased to show more details about the route and to determine the direction to a target point from a starting point or from another point. So to change the display scale, step one, press the rotary switch while a navigation operation is in progress. This will enable adjustment of the scale. Step two, you want to rotate that rotary switch to change the scale. Now, the scale changes each time you rotate the rotary switch, and there are three scale levels. So when you rotate the rotary switch further, it displays the direction to a target point. All right, so that's how you change the display scale. Now we're going to get into how to check the distance to your destination. To do this, simply press the top left button. Now each press of that top left button will cycle the display through the linear distance from your current location to preset points like the start point, the destination, etc. Now if the current linear distance to the destination is 1000 kilometers or greater, the message and it'll be a bunch of dashes with KM will appear. So that's how you check the distance to your destination. Now, some key points to keep in mind. Navigation displays the general route guidance up to a destination. It doesn't display detailed route guide like a car navigation system does. Now, when using a navigation, also be sure to navigate in accordance with the actual local road or other conditions. The navigation function is not intended for use while in motion in an automobile or other type of vehicle. Make sure to use the navigation outdoors where the sky is visible and not blocked by buildings, trees, and other objects. Keep the watch LCD pointed upwards until startup of the positioning operation is complete and the navigation screen appears. Now if the memory becomes full or if the allowable continuous measurement time is exceeded while a navigation operation is in progress, Navigation will stop and the watch will return to timekeeping mode. To set a destination that is not a waypoint in point memory, use the G-Shock Connected app. Routes that are acquired with the GPS navigation mode can be transferred to a phone for viewing and the GPS navigation can be used only when the battery indicator shows three bars or higher. So that's all for today. I know that was quite a bit of information. Now in part two of this video series, we'll be going through how to return to a start point, And this is known as the backtracking function, how to stop navigation and how to delete a destination. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can get notified when we drop our next video. That's all for now. And as always, continue to rock your G-Shock nonstop. Deuces!